actor, <laughs> producer, comedian, writer, and film director, already making us laugh here on set. You can catch him on the big screen next month in the comedy series Fifty Shades of Black. Hannah. Christian. Ow! Ooh. That hurts. Oh, please, God! Ah. White girls, get that elevator fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight through the weekend, Marlon Wayans is performing at Cobb's Comedy Club in San Francisco. But this morning, he joins us right here on the nine. Hey, man, how did you think of making a parody of that particular movie? I don't know half the stuff I come up with. I just, I don't know. God talks to me. He says, hey, I want you to make strange movies for strange people to laugh at. I think, and it's the way I see the world. It's like you would go, how do you make a spoof of horror movies? When I see a horror movie and people are getting their heads chopped off, I go, you know what's funny about that? It's the same thing when I see like Fifty Shades of, of Grey. I just sit there and go, you know what would be funny? What if he was like a bad lover? And so that's the So it's thing. as you're watching the movie yeah, right I there. Yeah, just go, in every situation you put him in, he's a bad lover. Right. And so he's trying to spank her, and what what's the worst case scenario? And I, you know, wound up making a really funny 90-minute uh, movie. And for your own sake, I mean, you like to create more so than sit back and kind of wait for the role. Right? I'm, I mean, I, I'm, that's been your career. I don't know if you see me, right? But I'm black. And <laughs> there's not a lot of roles for right. black people. You have to make Star, it happen. Star Wars, there's one black guy, all of them stormtroopers. None of them are black. Batman, right? Black. Back in the 90s. You've never you seen close, black. Right? Ba I was close, but then they rewrote me. So I, I, got, I got to this point in my life where I was just like, you know, instead of waiting on Hollywood, I want to be a part of Hollywood and be a part of somebody. I want to contribute. And yeah. so I, I write my roles, and then I can hire a bunch of black people. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah. And white, white people, and too. White people right. got some white people in there. They got some Spanish That's in there. Right. Hello. Right. Got some Puerto Rican. Right. I don't know we what you are. Some smart yeah. guys. We got some professors. Close enough. Yeah. Thank, Thank you that. very much. So, wow. Let me ask you, youngest of five That's brothers, yes. of 10 siblings in all, your brothers had success before you were really old enough to even consider yes. it. Did you ever at all think, I'm not going to do that because they're so good at it. You know, it's funny that that's the first time I actually got asked that question. And I always knew I was going to be an actor. See, my brothers was comedians. And I was like, you guys go have that comedian thing. I'm going to be a serious actor. So I went to performing arts high school right. and I grew myself to be an actor. But I've always been funny. And I think I stopped, I, I, I kind of strayed from doing stand up for so long because my brothers was doing it. And I was like, I'll never be as great as Damon because he has that twisted foot and them funny ears. And we all grew up in the same house. He's telling the same stories. And then I hit this point in my life where I was just like, no, I feel like I can actually contribute my own point of view, my own perspective of my childhood or uh, whatever story we have, I feel like as great as they are, I can be my own great. You know, and so that's why I started doing stand-up comedy. You know, Marlon, a lot of comedians say this, no matter what they do, acting or some sing or whatever, they'll never give up stand-up. Do you feel that way? Because oh, stand-up is like what really... Stand-up is the gym. When you do stand-up comedy, it, it's it's literally the gym. You're always thinking funny. Here's the thing about stand-up. As a writer, when you're on the road, when you have an audience in front of you, you are responsible for that audience. They yeah. pay $40 to see you, you better be $40 worth of funny. They yeah, better laugh. laugh. Yeah. Yes. Right. Women want to come Tears out there with their makeup. <laughs> oh, that was that was worth the $40. Yeah. Cause they want to go home afterward and you know have a great time later, the couples, you know, with I, they I thing. I get so it, yeah. you you're the foreplay, basically, right. as the comedian. So you go in there and you your job is to make everybody have a good time. But you the, the great thing about stand-up is you are responsible for making people laugh. And a lot of times writers, YouTubers, Viners, they're not on stage. So you're do you're putting out what you think is funny. Mm -hmm. I'm doing what I know is funny because there's an audience in front of me. How do you right. test your material? No. Just on people? Oh, you said what? How do you test I thought you said test your material. Yeah. I said, no, no, you don't get the news here. No, no, no. I'll do it for free, but I don't think I can say some of that no, stuff. No, no, Fine, no, you want to no, get the no, news no, canceled. No, 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 okay, I'm joking. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> he said, quick, cut the camera. Yeah, yeah. How do you, how do you, you know, how do you figure out if you think what you think is funny, everyone else thinks is funny? You try it on stage. You okay. just got, you just kind of. Pretty brave. You do it and you see what happens. And you can't be afraid. That's the thing. They're coming to see you. They want to see your point of view on things. And so you can't be afraid to go to dark places and come out and go, hey, I got this joke. I know it's a dark cave and you said don't go in there, but damn, man, this is funny. So. See, I tried at home and 50 Shades of Black, I, my last name's Meebach. I'm like 50 Shades of Meebach to my wife and she doesn't laugh at all. 
<laughs> and it's not working at home for me right there. So I'm hoping that your movie, when it comes out next it'll be month, better than, it'll, it'll be better, better than, than you in, in, at home. That, that's for sure. And we, uh, we put out on Twitter, someone wants to ask you a couple questions. Paul yes. Craig is wondering, did you and your brothers ever get your studio going in Oakland? I know no, the old I, army base. I, I that was back really, in 2008, yeah, I think. Yeah, we really right? tried hard to do that. There's just a lot of red tape and stuff, so that, that never happened. But, you know, uh, who knows, maybe one day. And we really uh, love the Bay Area. I spend a lot of time up here. I have a random question from a Twitter follower. What Go about those it. Warriors? You watch the Warriors and yeah, Steph Curry? Yeah, man. I, I feel like a groupie now because um, all of a sudden I was like, <laughs> Warriors, Steph Curry and these guys, they're playing like lights out. And my, my son loves Steph Curry. Like, he loves him so much like he's painting himself light skin. Like, I, <laughs> I just want to be him. <laughs> You got two teenagers. Right? I, I got two. I got my son who plays basketball great. He may be the next step. Um, my son, Sean, and my daughter, she's an uh, up-and-coming writer, producer, actress. Uh, Elihu Hernandez wants to know who was the wackiest person you've ever worked with so far. Uh, the wackiest person, Elihu, first of all, your spelling is atrocious. <laughs> oh, there's a C in wackiest, and Molly was with an O. Oh, you poor baby. Um, the wackiest person, Jim Carrey, probably the wackiest mm -hmm. person I've ever yeah. worked with. And my brothers, they're wacky people. Wacky but good guy? Great guy. Carrey, yeah. Oh, he's one, of, he'll sit there and do faces, and, you know, he was like TV, like, like uh, Jim, do, do uh, Jack Nicholson. And he'd mold his face up, and he, 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 he's just a great guy. All right, here's one more. Is there going to be White Chicks Part 2? Um, everybody's asking yeah. me that. I don't know. I If I could get the other... I'm on board. If I could just get the other two black guys on board, mm -hmm. then we could do it. Me, Sean, and Keenan. Uh, um, how, do you, how do you convince them to do it, then? If you, how do you get them on board? I don't know. Yeah. Sit down and watch the first one We'd again. We'd be on <laughs> set right now if I could just figure yeah. that out. Um, no, I think, um, you know, it was a lot of work, man, doing white chicks. That was a lot of work. You know how hard it is for a black man to become a white woman? It's a lot. Of, it's like three times the amount of work that Caitlyn just did. <laughs> Trust me, because we got to do the skin, too. It's, it's a lot of operations. But, you know, um, that's one movie I would love to do a scene. To do it again. Yeah, right, we'll look forward We'd to it. We'd love to see it. To the can, next one. can I ask real quick, comment about... Oh, by the way, follow me on Instagram at Marlon Wayans, and you can ask me questions. Twitter, Marlon Wayans. Facebook, Marla Wayans, and Snapchat, Marlon L. Wayans. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I was going to say, coming up on the holidays, do you guys all get back together? I mean, does everybody come siblings? We have and... to rent the Staples Center out. I was going to say. You know how many people? How many Wayans oh. is, is, is there are? Well, but and do you, you, or... you? You lay out a buffet, and right. like as soon as they go, food's on! They all rush the table like roaches. The kids ain't eating because all the adults got the food. We, it's every man for himself. So, okay. um, But we, we do it. We just don't do the Christmas exchange. It's to me. Right. Too many people. Did you ever think you'd you have take the care life? of your kids? I'll take care of mine. Absolutely. Did you? I mean, I, I I know you did not grow up like this. You had very little growing up. Oh, we. Had, you had cool. nothing almost. You called your, uh, your, your dad was. I would have stole your ties. Yeah. I would have. My rings, we everything. Would, oh, your rings would have been is, gone. Is, is, is this is this beyond your dreams? <laughs> your, your earrings, I've been wearing. They're fake. They're little, seven dollars. It don't matter. Hey, seven dollars. That's <laughs> plenty. Not many sandwiches I could buy for seven dollars. Did you ever dream this big, or did you just want to make it? Um, you know, it's funny, I actually dream bigger. There's things that wow. I want to do that I, you know, I'm still in the very beginning of my career. It's, it's, it, it, there's chapters, but this, this is a book, you know, I'm still in, in the very beginning of my career. There's so much I want to do, so much, you know, just not in terms of just making people laugh, make people smile, but, you know, at some point in my life, really enriching and bettering, you know, uh, kids' life. It's the, yeah. it's the give back, going back to my neighborhood, doing a great Christmas and making sure everybody in those projects every year they have gifts, making sure that the kids have somewhere to go so they have education, they have job training, they have, you know, just just things that I want to change the project, and the project mentality. It's one of the words I have in my son's wall, it's dream. Yeah. He's five. Yeah. He's still dream, man. Go and a lot get of times it, right? in, the, in this, where you grow up, it's hard to dream. You know, you have right. a dream and the parents are sitting there going, come on, that, that ain't never gonna happen. That's never gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, you gonna be our space. You gonna be in our space. Yeah, right. Ain't no rocket ship. We ain't even got a car. How the hell you gonna get a rocket ship? You know, sometimes parents, we right. limit what children can do. But the reality of it is, you know, there's no cap on imagination. There's no cap. And nowadays, everything you imagine, you can actually make happen. Were your parents like that with you? Or, or do they tell you you could be anything you wanted? Oh, my parents was like, boy, you ain't going to be nothing. Oh, okay. You don't be one of ten nothing. You see, Kenan, he ain't going to be nothing. Uh, you see, Damon, nothing. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. My yeah. parents actually... Um, uh, my dad was a little more fearful. My mom was a dreamer, and she always taught us to dream. Mm -hmm. And my dad was a hard worker. 
Mm -hmm. And so the combination of my mom and dad worked because he taught us the hard work ethic, and my mother told us put it toward something that has no cap, which is a dream, and something that you'll always be happy doing. I haven't worked a day in my life because I make people laugh for a living. So, so do they, you think in a small way uh, that your laughter is breaking down barriers, maybe racial barriers or maybe generational barriers absolutely. just because you're making people laugh? I think that that's my purpose. I think, and, and that's why I don't like when comedians nowadays on news programs uh, apologizing for a joke. Look, some jokes aren't going to hit some people. Some people are a little sensitive. We have a very sensitive time. That joke may not be for you, but you see those other two million people that were cracking up, and I made their day a little bit better. I'm sorry I didn't make your day a little bit. I'm sorry you were a little sensitive about it, but that's my job. That's my contribution. I'm not going to make everybody happy all the time. It's in shifts. And so, you know, what we're working for is to tell that one joke that makes the whole world laugh, but that takes a lot of traveling, a lot of touring. That's why cameras co shouldn't be in comedy clubs, because until I present it as a right. special, it's not ready for you to put it out. It's like taking a Picasso painting and he's just sketching something. You go, oh, we're going to sell this. Right. No, yeah. let him he take his time and go, let all right, breathe, yeah, right. and then yeah. he puts it up when he's ready. An artist has to be ready to present his material. Um, so, you know. Well, congratulations on all the success. Thank you, man. Have a good run this Thank weekend. You. Thanks for coming You're just lucky I ain't robbing you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for not robbing me. Hey, it's commercial break. So they don't see it. Oh, Marley <laughs> Wayne's performing at Cobbs tonight. Tomorrow, Sunday, tickets still available. We posted a link right there at ktv.com. Look for it under web link section on the top of our homepage. January 29th. It's That's right. Shades of Black. Shades of Black. Shades of Black. Black. Shades of Black. Shades of Black. That movie's never coming out. No, no. <laughs> now stick them up. There you go. <laughs>